Ah, life in Minnesota. When the temperature plunges and the world is frosted over, you can hide indoors and wait for springtime or get out there and have some fun. Since 1886, the St. Paul Winter Carnival has been a seasonal highlight of life in our capital city. Legend has it that the carnival began as a retort to a snobby East Coast reporter who had written that St. Paul in the winter was another Siberia unfit for human habitation. Well, the good people of St. Paul weren't going to take that snub quietly. They would prove that they were a city full of life, even in the middle of winter. The carnival began at a time when the populations of Minneapolis and St. Paul were booming. Each city was anxious to make a name for itself and to outdo its twin across the river. Celebrating our frigid climate was a new idea for local civic boosters, who had, for years, coke settlers here by downplaying the idea of harsh winters. But that image was hard to avoid, especially after Minnesota had endured a severe blizzard in 1873 and record snowfalls in 1881. The St. Paul Chamber of Commerce decided the best thing to do was to embrace the winter. They would commission an architect to build an ice palace as the centerpiece of a great winter carnival. As the palace was being built, interest grew from around the state. Soon, everybody wanted to be part of the festivities. Towns as far away as Fargo donated enormous blocks of ice to be included in the construction. The palace stood just east of the present-day Capitol grounds and was surrounded by toboggan slides, skating rinks, and other activities. Winter sports were a new phenomenon for most Minnesotans in 1886. Skiing, snowshoeing, and dog sledding were not unknown, but they were done more out of necessity than amusement. Skating was beginning to catch on, and tobogganing was a quickly growing fad. Ice slides could propel riders as fast as 50 miles per hour. Women were as eager to participate as men, even though some people thought it was improper for a lady to be riding on a toboggan, especially when she was being held tightly by a man. Clubs for tobogganing, snowshoeing, curling, and other sports proliferated and were the backbone of the first winter carnival. The parade was filled with floats and the various club members in their uniforms. The tradition of bouncing someone high in the air and catching them with a blanket continues to this day. Another tradition that continues is the storming of the palace at the end of the festival. Back then, the public was encouraged to bring their own fireworks to contribute to the fiery display. The first winter carnival was a huge success, lasting for four weeks rather than the two weeks originally planned. Carnival organizers were surprised to find that they had actually made a profit. 150,000 people had paid 25 cents each to attend. The Winter Carnival had proved to the world that the people of St. Paul could not only survive in the winter, they could thrive in it. The most lasting image of the St. Paul Winter Carnival is, of course, the Ice Palace. Here's a look at the variety of these crystal creations that have been the centerpieces of winter carnivals for the last 120 years.